What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. Today, I just want to sit back and talk about the state of the standard format in the Pokemon trading card game. So, uh, right now, it is April 2020. Rebel Clash is coming out on PTCGO pretty soon. And we've been playing the Ultra Prism through Sword and Shield format for a few months now. Uh, of course, we haven't had as many... Um, as many physical tournaments as we usually would have because of the pandemic and the quarantine. So that's definitely something unique that happened here with the ultra prism through sword and shield format, but we have kept up with playing and progressing the meta quite a bit because of the limitless online qualifiers and uh, other online tournaments and PTCGO in general. So uh, the meta still did progress uh, just something to note that it's a little different. Before I start talking about this, I want to shout out PotownStore.com, my sponsor and the best place for you to get PTCGO codes. Make sure you're using code CELIO for 5% off. And I've also recently become affiliated with TCGPlayer.com. So if you are purchasing physical cards and supplies on TCGPlayer.com, make sure you use the link down in the description below. If you click that and then that link leads to a sale, I get a small commission and it helps support the channel. Um, so yeah, I just want to kick back and talk about the state of the standard format and kind of what that is going to entail is uh, a few questions I've written down that I want to kind of ask myself or a few attributes of the game. So uh, is the game fun? Um, is there diversity in the competitive meta? Uh, is the power creep e excessive? Uh, how's the skill? Like, does it matter how good you are? How much does the skill matter? And then uh, how much does deck building matter? So I'm going to be asking these questions or I'm asking these questions to myself and then answering them kind of. Um, and let me know if you want me to touch on other things in the future. I'm going to try to uh, do it like a state of the game or state of the format every time a new set's about to drop to kind of reflect on the previous format and think about how the next set might affect things. Uh, so this is the first time I'm doing one of these. Um, I, I, I've probably done these to a certain extent, but this is the first time I'm officially calling it like a state of the game video. Uh, so I am going to focus on uh, the Ultra Prism through Sword and Shield, but I also want to take a step back to Ultra Prism through Cosmic Eclipse and then take a little step forward uh, to Ultra Prism through Rebel Clash. Uh, so looking at the Ultra Prism through Sword and Shield meta, um, I was very excited about Sword and Shield and I do think that it brought a lot of viable cards and a lot of um, cards with potential. I think Sword and Shield, the set, uh, brought a lot of new cards to the game. Um, but the oppressive combination of Zacian V and Ar Arceus Dialgapalkia tag team kind ha uh, it kind of mitigated how much diversity I think there really could have been or how many rogue decks could have popped up how many different kinds of cards could have seen success and how many different decks could have seen success I think the oppression of uh, our, the combination of Arceus Dialgapalkia and Zacian V kind of had this oppressive force over the format um, so uh, jumping back a bit just to compare ADP Zacian to something else, um, for a while players were saying that Spell Tag Malamar kind of had, uh, it was kind of gatekeeping the format so that other single prize attacking decks couldn't really succeed and it was, uh, and then evolution Pokemon and evolution decks were being gatekept by Spell Tag Malamar, and also because we didn't have basic Pokemon search in the format, or good basic Pokemon search in the format for a while. So we did get Quick Ball, which is great. I was very excited to see us getting Quick Ball, higher HP Stage 2s, uh, good Stage 1s like Chinchino. Um, and, you know, I thought maybe, okay, uh, we can combat Spell Tag Malamar now, since we can search out multiple of our Pokemon uh, on turn one with quick balls and some decks also have things like mysterious treasure netball if you don't have that you have pokemon communication um i thought it was looking pretty good for evolution decks and stage one decks and single prize decks in general uh, but then we have rcs dialgapalkia um which can be paired with a two prize pokemon zashin that basically one shots anything at once after alter creation gx is used uh, so alter creation gx is obviously the problem here in my opinion, um, not that it's the problem isn't that it's really good. 
Uh, there's many formats that I consider some of the best formats that have a couple defining decks that were at the top. Look at uh, 2010, you have Lux Chomp, Dialga Chomp, uh, Gardevoir Gallade. Some of the top decks, and people will, you know, kind of argue back and forth which of those were the best deck in format, usually somewhere between Lux Chomp and Gardevoir Gallade. But even though uh, Gardevoir Gallade and Lux Chomp were so oppressive, they were very strong, they had strong combinations of cards within their decks that worked well together, those formats were still very diverse. You, you, you don't hear people saying you either play Guardi Gallade, Lux Chomp, or you lose. Um, and they didn't really gatekeep entire chunks of decks in my opinion in the way that adp zashin has um because uh even if a deck should favorably trade with zashin and adp since they are it's a deck comprised of two prize pokemon and three prize pokemon and even if you're two shotting those two prize and three prize pokemon it's still not good enough because they're one shotting you and they're turning your pokemon into two prize pokemon with alter creation gx so my problem is that ADP Zashin kind of gatekeeps single price Pokemon as an entirety. Of course, save for a select few. Uh, we have Baby Blacephalon, which is just a very, very strong and explosive deck that has managed to survive, partially because uh, Zashin V is weak to fire, partially because the card is just insane and it can one-shot anything at once as early as turn one. Um, but ADP Zashin can still beat Baby Blounds, which is mind-blowing because... Uh, no pun intended for Blacephalon GX, but um, it, it's crazy that ADP Zashin can beat Baby Blounds, even though on paper it should be borderline unwinnable. And uh, on the side of ADP Zashin, I've actually beat Baby Blounds more times than I think should than I should have. Um, so uh, that's a really big part of the standard format for me that. Um, the combination of two very powerful cards has formed almost an unstoppable duo. And uh, it's not just ADP, and I want to highlight that because uh, let's go to Limitless, and I'm going to bring up the Cosmic Eclipse format. So Ultra Prism through Sword and Shield, where ADP was a card. Um, so I'm looking at Daytona Beach, the regional held on November 30th, 2019. It was the Ultra Prism through Cosmic Eclipse format. And ADP was a card. ADP Caldeo did pretty well. Um, there were two ADPs in top eight, Xander Perot and Will Jenkins. There was also two Gardevoir and Sylveon tag team. Um, there was a Spell Tag Malamar. There were two Florges dolls. There was a Mute to a Mute tag team of sorts. Um, so pretty diverse and then if you go further down we got Pidgeotto control uh abilities are pika rom uh the uh malamar with uh garchomp giratina blacephalon gx baby blounds also pretty diverse uh, so the top eight wasn't exempt of single price pokemon it had the malamar uh spell tag deck here um and fairly diverse now i'm not saying we don't have a diverse format now with sword and shield i do believe that it's somewhat diverse looking at results um but i don't think that it, i know that adp caldeo wasn't considered an oppressive deck it was considered very good but not oppressive like adp zashin is now let's go to another um standard format regional just one week after daytona beach so looking at san diego um the top eight looks pretty different here. So uh, we had Justin Bakari win with a Giratina Garchomp tag team deck with the Mistrevious Miss Mages Duskstone stamped down to a low hand kind of deck and use uh, the counter gain play from behind Tina tag team basically deck uh, that, that was pretty surprising to see. It won the tournament uh, and then there was a Lucario Melmetal deck that got second um, and this is obviously before Zacian, so Lucario Melmetal survived on its own, just playing Welder to accelerate and uh, countering the Gardevoir heavy meta that some people might have expected. Uh, but some pretty cool, unique decks there. First and second place, of course, a couple ADP Caldeo in the top, a couple Malamar, and then a Baby Blown. Um, There were also some Pidgeotto Checkmates with Persian GX around the top cut. Mute to uh, Pidgeotto Control, Ability Zard, um, AD, ADP Keldeo, Green's ADP, 
Um, but so a diverse format. But what I, what I was trying to say there is sword the sword and shield ultra prism format I believe is also fairly diverse. Um, but my issue is that um, depending on the week and the meta, I think the ultra prism through cosmic eclipse had kind of a rotating top decks and rotating best deck for the tournament. Whereas it's it's been pretty clear that it's ADPZ the whole way with the Sword and Shield format. And like I said, that's not necessarily an issue, but my problem comes in where ADP starts pushing single prize Pokemon decks out of the game. And I suppose it did start doing that with Cosmic Eclipse when ADP Caldeo got more, uh, the deck became better. People started building it better. Uh, so I suppose that did happen already. Uh, but just, it, it bothers me that just when we got the quick balls, when we got better evolution Pokemon, higher HP on evolutions, VMAX Pokemon, um, when the game started looking like it might be more diverse and not just big basics, um, ADP Zacian was a combination that stopped that progression from happening, which is kind of my issue there. Um, so... I do want to go and look at the Limitless Online Series Qualifier number one results, which is obviously Ultra Prism through Sword and Shield, almost a thousand players. Fairly diverse. Uh, there was five different archetypes in top eight. Two Chinchino Mills, two Micargo Mills, two Zacian ADP, a ADP Spirit Tomb, and an Ability Zard. Now, if you combine the Mill variant, since they're trying to do the same thing, um, there are only four uh archetypes really if you consider mill one whole archetype and that means there there was four of one archetype in top eight and then two zashin adp a couple other archetypes that trickled in there um and so and one of them was uh, adp tomb and of course there was also adp zashin which is the popular archetype and adp tomb was kind of a rogue digging into the top eight by ross cawthon um but my issue with this top eight is not that it is necessarily not diverse in the selection of decks that were in the top eight, but just the, these decks, um, it's kind of become a timer format. And the way I, I might, that might be confusing, but the way I want to, the way I think about it in my head is that it, these decks put you on a timer. So you have ADP Zacian, uh, that once it uses Alter Creation, they're winning in three turns usually, right? ADP Tomb, they used Alter Creation, they're, they're probably winning in three turns. Uh, Matt Cargo Mill and Chinchino Mill. Now, Chinchino Mill more so uh, puts you on a timer with, uh, okay, you, you've got 20 cards left in your deck, you're, you're not playing a mill counter. Well, uh, you either take prizes and they start using Balelba and they mill you in X amount of turns, or you don't take prizes and they can't use Surge and they mill you anyway and you're just sitting there doing nothing. But once the first prize is taken, you have a set amount of turns to take the rest of your prizes or they mill you and they win the game that way. Um, and let's just juxtapose that to other decks like abilities are OK. Maybe they whiff a card for a turn. They don't knock you out. They don't win the game in three turns. Um, a setup deck like uh, you two Malamar where they need to get their Malamars going uh, a deck with a little more depth. And in my opinion, the Chinchino Mill deck and the Zashin ADP deck don't have depth. Uh, they have this timer that they put you on where it's basically like you have to try to not lose the game um, in the next few turns. And I, I don't necessarily I don't necessarily like that. Um, but again, my main issue is that it, this format is largely big basic Pokemon or milling the opponent. Um, there's not a lot of evolutions. There's not <laughs> any stage twos. Um, even V maxes have been pushed out of this format uh, since V maxes, even though V maxes are so strong and so bulky and do so much damage. Uh, I think there's like one Lapras V max deck in day two of the limitless qualifier. Maybe there was one more, but um, I also think there might've been a stone journer, um, but Basically, my point is they're they're almost non-existent. Uh, the more Peko V Max, Stonejourner V Max, Norlex V Max, and Lapras V Max. Now they aren't necessarily the strongest cards. They're not like insane, but I I do think if you looked at them in a vacuum, you'd say, oh yeah, this this can probably you know day to a tournament place well. 
Uh, but then if you look at it in comparison to Zacian ADP, a deck of all basic Pokemon, and they're winning the game in three turns after they use Alter Creation because they have a two prize Pokemon that's taking two to four prizes off of your Pokemon because of Alter Creation GX, things look a little different there if you look at it in comparison to the ADP Zacian deck we have instead of looking at these cards in a vacuum. Um, and, and basically what I'm trying to say here is uh, I'm upset with how ADP Zacian has limited deck creativity and uh, the kinds of archetypes we can play. Now, fast forwarding over to uh, Ultra Prism through Rubble Clash. Uh, lots of strong new VMAXs. The VMAXs look fairly promising. Um, or so I thought. Now, <laughs> so I thought the VMAXs would make things more diverse. Um, but the issue is Dragapult VMAX, in my opinion. So, um, Dragapult VMAX actually handles the current Zacian ADP variants fairly well if you don't build around Dragapult VMAX, which I do think players should try to build around Dragapult VMAX. Don't lose to that deck, it's very strong. Um, but I was happy that we were going to see some evolution Pokemon come into the format. That's great. But now we have Dragapult VMAX that does 130 to the active and 5 to the bench, however they like. Two turns of that, so uh, if you're playing against a single price Pokemon, two turns of that would mean um, you're knocking out two single price Pokemon in the active for 130 usually. I think that's safe to assume. And then five damage counter spread around the bench can either be knocking out two basics to evolution Pokemon or um, combining the damage to one single price Pokemon. So more or less evening out the prize trade, even though you're a three a three prize Pokemon, if they're two shotting you with a single prize Pokemon and you're knocking out both of the things they two shot you with and a Pokemon on the bench, at least one, you're getting three prizes, they're getting three prizes. Um, but with healing and honest, honestly, the speed of Dragapult VMAX only needs two energy to do uh, its main attack, and you have Giant Bomb and you have Horror Energy and you have Galarian Zigzagoon Scoop Up Net to spread more damage. Um, I think it has been doing more than evening out the prize trade and testing and it's actually coming ahead on the prize trade versus single prize decks um so we got some more diversity in the fact that these vmax cards look more promising than the sword shield vmax cards and also some solid v's but those are just big basics again um and we also have some new evolutions in the format that i'm going to try to work with but now the single prize pokemon and the evolution pokemon um, even though they got quick ball and sword and shield and they got higher HP now, not only do they have to try to get around alter creation GX. Now they also need to protect their bench from damage counters because of Dragapult V max, which is just sniping their basics before they can even evolve. Um, so while we do get some more V maxes and evolving is going to be a thing that I do believe is happening in our standard format again with Dragapult V max and potentially some of the other V max cards like Toxtricity looks very promising. And uh, although I have seen a lot of players not really liking Inteleon V max, I do think it's a fairly good card if you can get around the lightning weakness. Um, even if it's just Dragapult and Toxtricity, two evolution decks being in the format would be pretty nice and they're not necessarily one-shotting each other all the time uh well dragapult is never one-shotting you but toxtricity can with electric powers but i think they're fairly balanced cards so i'm happy to see those coming into the format uh but at the same time you now have adp zashian and dragapult vmax kind of gatekeeping uh single prize decks and evolution decks which kind of upsets me we did also get uh, the announcement for the rotation for next year today, and it's going to be team up on, which means we are keeping tag team Pokemon. We are keeping ADP. And uh, like I said, this is mostly state of the game for Ultra Prism through Sword and Shield and what's coming with Rebel Clash. But since I haven't really done one of these officially uh, before, I just want to touch on tag team Pokemon. I wish they never happened. Uh, Sun and Moon was a great time for the game, I think. Um, I got competitively back into the game when Steam Siege was released. That was when I really got back into it after um, a fairly decent break. And uh, I was really, really happy with the GX Pokemon needing to evolve because I just can't stand big basic formats. Um, so I was really happy with Sun and Moon and Guardians Rising and Burning Shadows. And it felt like skill and deck building and meta calling... All these good things have come back into the game um, with decks like Drampa Garbodor, uh, Gardevoir GX, Galicepod. Um, it, it felt really great. And even with uh, Crimson Invasion, 
um, and Shining Legends Ultra Prism. With the Zorak GX decks, deck building was really important. Skill was through the roof. Uh, you had to be really, really good with Zorak GX decks. And also the games had slowed down a little because you had these Ace of Rolla Wars and Enhanced Hammer Wars and uh, Riot is beating 120 back and forth. So even though a lot of the decks in the format were either Zorak GX or beat Zorak GX, I felt like the game had slowed down. Deck building was important. Teching was important. Skill was very, very important. You had to know your Zorak decks inside and out. Um, that was a really great time. Um, and even when tag teams initially came out, Pika Rom, I, I've never been a fan of Pika Rom, but still, we had Zorak decks. We had uh, Weezing. We had Zapdos, Jirachi. So even when tag teams first came out, I didn't feel like they completely flipped the game on their side with Pika Ram and the initial tag teams. But then when we got Rushizard and we got Mewtwo and Mew um, and eventually got Arceus Dialgapalkia, uh, that's when I felt like tag teams had just ran off with the game. And uh, the high HP, you have to use this tag team to one shot that tag team and then this tag team one shots this tag team. Um, I hated all of that. Uh, the only good thing, in my opinion, that came out of tag teams were the tag team supporters and tag call, which were very reminiscent of the Holon supporter engine um, and the Holon transceiver. So I, I liked that. <laughs> that was the one part I liked about tag teams. So Cynthia, Caitlin, Guzmahala, Malolana, tag call. Uh, forget about Baloba and Bryson, man. We didn't need that card. But um, so that was the good part about tag teams for me. Just wanted to rewind a bit back to tag teams and touch on that so you kind of get where i'm coming from with i want to see evolution pokemon work again like they were a few years ago when sun and moon came out we had desi plume at the start with sun and moon and then of course guardians rising with grandpa garbador and that just had such an effect on the game that i loved where players had to build their decks less either you have less items in your deck and you uh understand what's happening with the meta and if you have a lot of items in your deck and you use them uh, with greed you will be one shot by garbador every time i love that um and then gardevoir gx and glycopod gx with burning shadows also ver a very skilled time of the format i believe or of the game i believe um so i, I miss that um and of course i missed some of the formats i would consider the golden ages like 07 and uh 2010 2011 um but yeah so i'm, I'm hoping we're moving there again i feel like pokemon has this thing where uh, we get evolutions back and we get a format that people think it's skilled and then boom, they slap a 300 HP Pokemon on us. So um, hopefully we can move past that, but with the rotation announced for next year, it's team up on. And while I like a lot of cards in team up on other than uh, basically ADP at this point, sometimes Rushy's are sometimes mute to a Mew, but I think Rushy's are in mute to a Mew are fairly balanced now with Sword and Shield and Rebel Clash out. Um, but ADP still leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Hopefully, um, like I said, I, I was hoping that Dragapult VMAX would take care of it, but in the process, Dragapult VMAX also gatekeeps single prize decks and evolution decks. So we got rid of one problem, and then the new problem is just replacing it completely, in my opinion. But uh, we'll have to see how that goes. Let me know what you think about the current standard format, the state of the game. Uh, with Ultra Prism through Sword and Shield, uh, how you thought about tag teams, how you think the game is going to go with Rebel Clash in it, if you think we will get back to a healthy game again, or at least what I consider a healthy game. So right now, I will say I think the format is diverse enough that you can pick from a wide selection of decks that you want to play. Uh, is the game fun? I don't think the game is extremely fun in Ultra Prism through Sword and Shield. Um, I have been playing old formats and going into rebel clash uh because i don't want to play ultra prism through sword and shield the only reason i'm playing it is one for content on my channel and two because of the limitless qualifiers for one and two it's ultra prism through sword and shield um the power creep i love what they've done with power creep um they've increased the hp for vmax pokemon while lowering the damage they do so vmax pokemon usually aren't one shotting each other uh, which is great. I love that because with tag teams, they increased the HP and they increased the damage and they increased the prize rewards. So they increased everything at one time with tag teams. And for me, that made a very 
one shot big basic format which like i said i don't like but with vmax pokemon i love what they did they raised the hp and kept the damage where it was or even a little bit lower than with tag team pokemon so i love that um uh deck building i think deck building is getting a little better uh just a little better uh whereas you can do more with your deck as you want to uh we saw that with ross cawthon's adp tomb uh we saw that with players switching around their sleepy mill and their chinchino mill a little bit of differing lists seeing success in the limitless qualifier number one um but of course i'd like to see more diversity i'd like to see more deck building and more meta calling being important um and lastly i think the other one i didn't touch on was skill um obviously skill is important due to like sequencing and sequencing is very important right now i think uh making sure your deck is consistent knowing the risks you take if you over tech and then sequencing um but i don't think skill is anywhere near where it has been in the past like i said with zorark decks or like in 2006 and 2007 uh where i think skill was very very important with a lot of tutor supporters and also 2010 2011 with you know the cyrus conspiracy format with sp pokemon where um you had a lot of things in your deck that you could search out every turn kind of like with a greens deck except greens kind of got ran out of the format today um in today's game but yeah so i i don't think we're anywhere near the highest skill levels we could be um but of course sequencing is always going to matter so the person that sequences better is likely going to do better the person that's making the least amount of misplays but right now i think that's the best way to say it right now it feels like you need to misplay the least instead of you need to play well um i don't feel like i need to play excessively well with my deck because i don't think there's a high skill cap for a lot of these decks to play excessively well i think it's just if you make minimum misplays you'll probably do fine um, and I guess you could say that for a lot of formats, but I do think there's formats where you can really uh, exceed what other people are doing with a deck based on how well you're playing it. Like I said, with Zorak deck, Zoro Pod, Zoro Rock, Zoro Control. Um, but now I feel like there's definitely a lower skill ceiling and it's just misplay the least you can and you'll probably do fine. Um, so that's how I feel about the state of the game right now for Ultra Prism through Sword and Shield and a little bit of Cosmic Eclipse, a little bit of Rebel Clash, like I said. Um, that That's my thoughts on the state of the game for the Pokemon trading card game right now. This might have been a little longer than I planned on it being, but I hope you all enjoyed this. Let me know what you want to hear from me in the next kind of video like this when I talk about my thoughts on the reflection of uh, Ultra Prism through Rebel Clash. When the next set's coming out and I start testing that, I'll do another video like this. It might be a little bit shorter because I'll have this one to reference. And uh, like in this one, I kind of had to do a little catch up because I had not done one of these for the Ultra Prism through Cosmic Eclipse format. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. Disagree with me. Tell me I'm right. Whatever it is, I'd love to hear it in the comments down below. Make sure if you are shopping for PTCGO code, you're doing it on potownstore.com and use code CELIO for 5% off. And also, like I said at the beginning of the video, I am now affiliated with TCGplayer.com, so you can use the link in the description down below if you're going to be shopping on TCG Player, and I get a small commission from that. I really appreciate it, and it helps the channel. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this in the future, and you're not already subscribed, you can check out information about my Patreon down in the description below, and also get links to my social media like Twitch and Twitter and whatnot. Have a good day, and I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network.